Okay. Paul, what's up? Hey, Corey, how are you? Not bad. How the bees look coming back from almonds? Uh, be honest with you, I was really pleased with them. They uh, they hit a flow while they were out there, so they come back a lot heavier than I wanted. Which means, uh, normally, if you don't have all that honey, you know, you can just put a box on top, add a little feed, and they'll move up into it, and it'll give you a little more time for uh, getting ready for making splits and queen cells and stuff like that, but. They uh they managed to hit a flow while they were out there and the whole top deep is plugged. So then you got to pick that deep up and put a deep underneath of it because Queen's not going to go through a whole deep of honey to uh move up yeah. above into some comb. So a lot of heavy lifting, um, a lot of burr comb. I think I end up with uh six deep boxes full of uh burr comb that's full almond honey. Just so it's just been a gummy mess. So, did, did somebody um, say it tastes like crap? It's the only honey I've ever spit out. Um, Are you serious? It, it's just bitter. It is bitter tasting. Really? Um, yeah. It's good for the bees. Um, the bees will eat it up. You know, they'll make a lot of brood off of it. Um, the problem with the pollen out there is it's just one pollen source. So, the, yeah. So when they come back, we let them sit for a couple of weeks and kind of get some fresh pollen in them, get a variety versus just one sole source of pollen. So, um, but no, overall, I was really happy. I think we had 5% um, that had queen issues, um, drone layers or whatever when they come back. Um, that was probably just, they probably were. Any queens when they went out, to be honest with you, because it can't really, there's no brood in them. So, yeah, uh, when they went out, we couldn't tell if the the queen was good, but they were still clustered. So, how do they grade but, that? Like, do they, do you have to, whenever you send them out there, do you have to like have an average of so many bee covered frames, or how do they do that? So, I'm learning a lot of this myself. This is only the second year um i sent bees out um but yes you're you're graded off of uh the size of the cluster so okay. um and there's some there's a lot of variables to that temperature um you know when you know if it's cold and windy mm -hmm. yeah if it's cold and windy they'll really shrink down right. um but generally so like in california you're you're the guys that grade in california they have a set temperature, whether it be 50 or 60 degrees. So basically you're required, depending on your contract, you can have six frame or eight frame contract, um, or that's what my broker does. Yeah. Um, I think there's some guys that do seven frame too. I'm not for sure. Um, but they will, they'll grade them in 50 to 60 degree temperatures and they have to meet. In other words, you have to have coverage of eight frames. Okay. Yeah. So, and when I say eight frames, or when they say eight frames, I mean it's like eight frames dripping with bees, like the whole frame covered. Um, so you have to, you kind of have to, especially for me, because I I ship mine out of Missouri um, for the last two years I have. Um, so our temperatures, a lot of times when I'm going through and grade them, are in the 40s or 30s. So I'm having to kind of judge take into consideration the temperature that sh that's good. They're going to be smaller. Yeah. So um, doing a lot of talking with other commercial guys and stuff. Um, what I've been told and what's worked for me so far is basically if it's, you know, 30 or 40, 35 degrees, um, a basketball size cluster um, will, uh, will make an eight frame average. Okay. So, they kind of cover um, the pounds. Right. And as if, if it gets colder, the, your, your cluster can get smaller. So um, I sent the, the whole load I sent this year, none of them got rejected. Um, they were happy with them. So, but I know there's guys that, you know, the comp they do the same thing when they come out of the sheds. Um, uh, they grade them before they put them in almonds. So, 
But, but yeah, it's basically a, a frame average, six, seven, eight frames. That's what you, that's what you get paid for. So last year, I think we did a six frame contract. You get paid a little less, but you can send smaller hives. So, yeah. um, and if you're if you your bees aren't looking, you know that great. That's that allows you to still send bees. Um, so, or at least get paid for sending them. So, yeah. Well, what did you say? Five percent went queenless or something like that. But may have been yeah, around five percent. That's not yeah, it, was, bad. it was right. At, I think it was. I think it was a little under five percent. It was. We sent. Th- I sent three sixty eight, and I had seventeen that came back um and most of them were drone layers so probably queens just failed um yeah. i think there was a couple of them that were just dead now whether they died in transit um you know who knows so yeah i know there uh there was a dude that was out of kentucky uh master beekeeper guy kent williams and he i know he moves his around a lot and he acts like it's not that uncommon whenever you go to move them around that crazy stuff happens or they go queenless or you know, I don't know. Right. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Like we had one on the way back um, that was up on the top, kind of had it, we kind of had a messed up load. That was kind of a weird number to send. Um, so we had some that were stacked up four high, right? But so step deck on the truck. Yeah. We had a, a stack of four. Well, one of them, the top box fell off behind the net. <laughs> and they were, they were still alive. I mean, they had 1,900 miles. They were still alive. Now, they're they're not doing the greatest, but they're still alive. Um, but, yeah, so stuff happens. I mean, I think last year, last year we had uh, – uh broker or one of the guys that was working for the broker last year i'm friends with him and he's like hey man i'm sorry uh i dropped one of your pallets on off the truck or off the loader or something he did something he dropped dropped one of them he goes man i busted it all up i put it back on there but it ain't much left and i was like hey man it happens yeah so but overall you planning on keep doing it it's worth it good income source as long as it's as long as it's as long as it's worth it um i hear the prices are just supposed to go up of course transportation's gone through the freaking roof too i mean i've been getting i've been sending loads to california which that's what i do with my day job it's not bees and they've been hitting us pretty good and like wanting extra fuel which i mean no surprises there and god only knows what it is in california but Right. I, right. So my trip home cost me five hundred dollars on my trip out there. So um, really raise the rates. Yeah. Um and I'm hearing mixed stuff about you know whether the rates on almonds are gonna go up or down. Um so it just depends. Right. Hmm. There was I. I really am you, thinking you having about, connection issues. Uh, you kind of delayed just a little bit your video, but it seemed like your sound is okay. Is it delaying on your end? Yeah, a little bit. I can hear you okay. It seems like your video's a little bit delayed. Yep, you're back. So whenever you, I keep pondering too, which I haven't quit my day job or anything, but uh, you know, I always think about just doing bees full time and whatnot. Okay, I think I'm back now. Yep. I had to switch. I had to switch. My Wi-Fi messed up for a second. So okay. Had to switch the hotspot on my phone. Gotcha. So, what were you saying? Oh, just 
I, I'm thinking about going to palettes too, but I didn't know if I was going to do almond pollination, but I don't want to be lifting these things anymore. You know, I was thinking about like a, which you kind of thought about that too at one time, like an easy lift or something similar to it, or those apigenita cranes or something like that. But it seems like you're limited to those two deep, two colonies per pallet, which is probably a little tippy, you know, on a set of full size forks and whatnot. So I don't know, what, what are your thoughts on that? I mean, would you just go to a full four pallet setup? Or I guess it totally yeah, depends I mean on what you want to do. Yeah, it kind of depends on what you're wanting to do. Um, I actually built uh, one one of those booms, and I did use it for a year um, in some two way pallets. Um, the problem with it is you just can't like the two way pallets. They are, I wouldn't say they're tippy. Um, maybe if you're picking them up with a loader, a little bit tippy. Um, I didn't have any problems with hives getting blown over or anything like that, even during the honey flow when they're stacked real tall. Uh, the main thing was just you know, you're not going to send two-way pallets to California, you know, yeah. and that was, that was one of my ultimate goals was to get bees, uh, in almonds. Uh, and so that's the reason why I, I diverted from that plan and, and moved to going to four ways. Um, but I mean, for me, I'm, I'm kind of hard headed, I guess. Um, the boom loaders, you know, they do help with the, the lifting and stuff. Um, but I just, I, I, for me, I, I'm in a one guy show, you know, so I'm, it's me. So I, uh, I don't have that time and the boom loaders are real slow. They slow you down a lot. Gotcha. Um, but, uh, for me, it's just easier for me to, you know, just lift the boxes. Now, I will say now that I went completely palletized um, and now I'm converting, I'm actually adding on, excuse me, I'm adding on to my building to make it more accessible with forklift. Oh, sweet. You're extracting honey. So basically I can pull honey, put it on a, uh, a honey pallet. Move it around. Move it around the loader instead of, mm -hmm. so my, my dad was a boom guy and, and then he used, he uh, yeah. Yeah. I've, I've still got the truck and the boom. <laughs> really? Yeah. Yeah. I've got a 79, uh, Ford Ranger, believe it or not. It's a one ton Ranger. That's how old it is. They called them Rangers back then, but, um, and it's got a 14 foot bed and it's got the boom on it. So one day I'd like to restore it just, yeah. uh, um, but, uh, but no, he used the boom and hive hand carts. Um, so like when we pulled honey and stuff, we had, um, little hand cart pallets we put you know put the honey on and we carted in the building um so i'm trying i'm getting getting away from that and going to pallet jacks and stuff like that so less trips um just and picking up the picking stuff up with the loader is just it's it saves my back a ton so yeah. Well, I've already, my back already bothers me. I mean, it wasn't great from high school wrestling and football anyway. And then I've just abused right. it. Abused too. Did it whenever? Yes, he, I, did he have a two way, two way pallet or a two deep pallet? Or did he, was he moving bigger stuff with it? Or was it just single? It was pallet? single. It was a single pallet. Um, so like they were single pallets that you could just use a hand cart with or basically a dolly. Um, and then the truck, he ran cleated boxes. So like the, the boom on the truck went underneath the cleats. Okay. So he could, he would pick the whole hive up. And of course the bottom board was attached to the, each hive. Um, Cause he, yeah, nails, he would nail them to the bottom. Cause he did apples in, in Northern Missouri. So we'd move uh, almost all of our hives and apples in the spring. Yeah. And I think we could haul, I think we hauled like, I may be wrong, but I want to say there was like 60 on, we could get 60 on that truck. If I remember Pretty right. Good. Nice. So, well, that's uh, the thing is like, my, I wouldn't be, I don't think I would do almonds. I don't want to rule it out, but it's not one of my goals, you know, Right. But I just want to be able to move stuff around better. If I'm making nukes, you know, like just save my back more, but it wouldn't be like, I don't, 
and I, I could be wrong unless something changes, but I don't see myself running like thousand plus colonies. You know what I mean? I would yeah. like to, but then you got to have a crew and everything too. And I don't know, it gets complicated. I don't know. Right. No, I know. I trust me. I know I'm, that's something I'm going to work out this year is employees. I'm kind of hoping my, my youngest son, I'm hoping he's going to stay home for the summer before he goes to college. So I can get a year worth of work out of him. So. Yeah. But, I've got my kids lined up too, but they're, you know, somewhat compliant, but they're, you know, Jade's, <laughs> driving. Jade's driving now. So she's going to need money. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I've got work that needs to be done. So. Right. We'll work out something, but. Yeah. The biggest thing for me is I just, you know, last year I, I tried hiring a couple of people and, and, uh, uh, just didn't have much luck. Um, and finally just kind of, Hey, I'm going to, I'm going to do this myself. So we ran, well, was, I'm right around 500 right now. Um, so we were in, we were at sick, probably we were at six something last year. Um, but I had help. Don't get me wrong. So, um, but this year I'm planning to try to get to a thousand. So sweet. Yeah. With the goal of sending two trucks to Almond. So, I mean, you, do you think you can handle it most of the year and maybe just have some seasonal help, like pulling honey and stuff? Do you think you can run through them enough and do most of that yourself? Or is it whenever you make that jump, is that going to be uh, definitely going to have to have somebody around? What do you think? I'm going to find out here real quick. <laughs> That's how I, what, I think, what is it? Bob Benny said that he learns by biting off too much and then learning how to chew it. <laughs> yeah. I like, that. I, like <laughs> I like the one where he, I like the one where he talks about the plates, you know, the guy that has the plates on the sticks, I didn't hear you know, that. <laughs> you didn't hear that one. Yeah. He was talking about having, you know, you got those plates on the saucers on the stick yeah, and they're all spinning, yeah. you know, yeah. eventually you're going to get too many of them and you're going to start <laughs> losing them, you know, and that's, that's kind of what I, so. I felt like I got there already between the day job and doing school and MSBA and all that stuff. I'm ready to cut back on stuff and just, <clears throat> just do bees and, you know, right. I assume I'll be working a day job for a while, but. Yeah. I just got lucky, you know, timing, just timing, just hit just right. And I was able to walk away from uh, the job that I had. Uh, perfect opportunity. And I, I just took it. Right, though. I know some people just pull the ejection seat and some of them I'm scared for. I, I wasn't as worried about you. I felt like the timing was good and you had more of a foundation under you. you know, plus yeah, but it was, was it was still scary. And then, oh, yeah. uh, I mean, right after that, uh, so I... I left that company December 15th. And I think like January 30th, I found like 75% of my hives dead. <laughs> so, That's a kick in the pills. <laughs> yeah, that, was, that was scary. That was, oh, yeah. that was really, really scary. Yeah. Um, well, bees but, are agriculture, man. Like you don't know, you're going to have good years and bad years, you know? Like I feel like once well, I pay more of my stuff off, I guess the only thing I got now is the house house note and then the bee shed and I'm, I should have the bee shed paid off in three years four years something like that and then that's that'll be a load off but still I've got a house payment you know right I don't know. no yeah it was it was it was definitely a, like <laughs> what did I just do <laughs> so I'm not gonna lie I I, I stayed I laid awake at night like I bet holy cow that. Yeah. Um, but you know, it's, you're going to have adversity. I mean, this year I had, Definitely. so that year, that year I, I, we went to Texas and, uh, of course I bought some stuff in Texas and I, I got back up to where I was basically, um, by using Texas and the resources that are down there. And, uh, luckily I come back, you know, we come back to Missouri and it was, ridiculous honey crop year um i had hives that 
you know, were taller than me and I'm six, five, I couldn't even see in them. I was just putting boxes on top of them. That's awesome. Um, was it sweet? So then clover? this year, huh? Is it sweet clover where you're at a lot of it? Primarily. Yeah. Yeah, I love sweet clover. It ta- the honey tastes awesome. Right. Yeah. So the Valley that we live in, the, they used to strip mine for coal and whenever they were going back and reclaiming all that, they sowed sweet clover. Okay. Um, to hold the ground together so it's it's got a pretty good hold around here i mean it's not it's not what it used to be yeah um but you you still find it in the strip pits and stuff so um but yeah so fast forward to this year i had twice as many hives i had like 600 on the ground and i made a third of the honey because it just never stopped raining isn't that so, crazy you just never know yeah, it's just, it's one year, it, it, it's farming, you know. Exactly, and that's what, I mean, I love it, and I love the, I like the idea of thinking about, like, being in a grind, you know, you're going to have a grind with that, but then having time off, you know what I mean? Like, I work right. my day job, and I use up a lot of my time off to go work bees. Right. Know, I'm just kind of ready to, I don't know which I get myself into too much stuff. So I guess if some of that stuff goes away, it'll probably be just fine. But it is, I think that'd probably be good advice to give somebody if they were thinking about pulling the eject button on the day job is, is making sure you're in a position to be able to weather a little bit of a good time right. and bad times, you know? Yeah. I mean, there's no, I mean, there's not very many rich farmers out there, you know, they have good years. And then they have bad years and yeah. you just, hope, you hope the good years are, you know, make up for the bad years. You know? <laughs> right, exactly. So that's, that's kind of the, the nature of farming. So, mm-hmm. so true, but I'm sure I could make it work if, especially like I said, if I didn't know anybody a dime, if I was totally debt free, I wouldn't think twice about it. It's not, yeah. Very good. you know, yeah. Cause you're going to have, you're going to have expenses that, Oh, you yeah. know, when you have a paycheck that comes in all the time, you don't notice, you know, yeah. and then once that paycheck's not there and, <laughs> and you're like, hold on, wait a minute. Yeah. You know, I gotta, I gotta, I got, gotta buy, you know, two or $3,000 worth of equipment. It's like, huh. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. um, and as you grow, the checks just get bigger. So yeah, yeah <laughs> like, that's true. The ones you're writing and the ones you're getting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. And you just hope the ones you're getting are coming in faster than the ones you're writing. So <laughs> yeah. but that's awesome. But no, it's uh I'm hoping for a good year. So the bees look really, really good. So I'm hoping for one too. It's kind of what you're just you're north of me in Missouri, but it seems like, I mean, I was looking at the extended forecast. It looks like through April, no frost danger. You know, I mean, they're just thumping these maples and stuff around here. It's not just maples because I just watched the colony for just a, I haven't even dug through a bunch of them. I've been so busy with school. I'm about to be digging through all of them here real quick. But I mean, there were several different colors of pollen coming in. So there's right. multiple sources blooming. Yeah, I'm actually, I was actually telling a guy today, looking at the weather, the long range weather and, and just the, I'm probably going to start a couple weeks earlier this year, grafting and stuff. So I just, I Um, told Bruce Snavely, I was like, I'm not going to be surprised if I'm grafting in March. And like, I'm not the one that first out of the gates grafting before everybody right. else is i wait till it really kind of kicks in because you know it's just like putting your garden out too early you know what i mean it can bite you a little bit i kind of wait just a little bit but anyway there's some years i graft in march like the last week or so of march and i won't be surprised if this is one of them right I mean, well the other thing people. right the other thing for me is i i just have to look for the weather um because these bees that come back from almonds oh my i mean God. they're they're already full of drones yeah um i will say this year I, I i'm doing a little bit stuff different this year um basically i've got all my 
hives in like a five mile radius around my warehouse yep. and dropped them, you know, in yards of like 48 to 24 um, with the intent of making splits and yep. basically I'll pull splits from one yard, just take them to the next and drop them. So I may eventually will have probably a hundred in each yard, um, but I'll be mating queens. So yep. I'll have that drone drone population in my in my yards will be very high so um and then my home yard where i do a lot of my queen rearing uh just for extra queens and for queens to sell um i'll have you know a lot of drones in the area also so yeah well if you're doing like a circular you know and you're in the center of it that'd be a good place to drop a bunch of nukes too you know and right. whatever way yeah, that's go there my plan is this year to run somewhere around a hundred, maybe more, I'm sorry, 150 uh, mating nukes there yeah. at my home yard. What What are you um, using for mating nukes? Are you using minis or like a five frame or? Um, I used two. Well, this year I'm going to have two. Mainly in the years past, I use a four frame nuke. It's okay. a deep box but it's only four frames. Mm -hmm. You can put two of them side by side on a 10 frame box, um, kind of like the Palmer nuke boxes. Yeah. Yep. Um, but these, they're just handy because I can go out and throw a couple of frames of brood in them above a queen excluder, come back the next day and they're a box full of bees. Yeah. Um, or I can just split them off of each other, however. And then I've got some four-way pallets that are, uh, little skinny narrow pallet basically the same size as a two two way 10 frame pallet but these are four way for the nukes yeah um that i keep them on and then stands and stuff and then this year i've also got some uh those they look like coolers the styrofoam coolers they're yeah. deep I, I got some of those in a little barn by that i'm going to try i've actually had two hives over winter in them and i mean these things were just little bitty i mean little bitty swarms that i caught late and uh believe it or not they're doing really good in those styrofoam boxes so is uh, it standard size frames or is it like little half you know, it's standard size frames really? yeah Man, deep that's pretty cool deep frames um that's one of the things i've you know a lot of guys of course guys in california and the lower states they use those little minis because they can put a cup of bees in there yeah we're a whole bunch of queens off of them my thought process for me, I'm not rearing that many queens. Right. Um, and when when they're done, I mean, what are you going to do with this little mini nuke? You know, um, a lot of times they just pull the queens out and then the bees die, you know. Um, so me, I, I'll basically, my last round, um, when I start pulling them and, and selling them or whatever, I can combine everything because they're a deep, it's a yeah. deep frame um so everything's interchangeable so you know if i pull a queen out of one you know i can add add those frames of brood to two or three others and and then i can you know i i overwinter and double stack so last round of queens you know i'll just let them overwinter and it'll be four frames on top of four frames so basically eight frames um and they overwinter really good oh, yeah. so yeah uh, in fact, I noticed one, two of them yesterday when it was 80 degrees had bees hanging off of them. So I probably ought to <laughs> look at a couple of them, but um, move them to something 10 frame, maybe. I'll probably just put another box on top of them. Yeah, let them go and let them go. And then I'll split them down back down into singles. Um, and most of them start off as two frames of brood. So, um, and I do that mainly because our temperatures are so fickle. But yeah. once it gets warm, I'll do one frame, you know, splits in those little four frame boxes. They do really good. So frame yeah. of honey and frame of brood and oh yeah. Throw a queen cell in there and you'll be surprised what it'll do. Oh yeah. <laughs> I, I agree. So. I like having everything in deep too, but like you said, I'm not really producing mated queens or anything open mated. So just having odd sized equipment just i mean i even had you know i don't know maybe a, i don't think i'm ocd but i had some to where i had like five shallow honey supers out of all the supers i had that were mediums 
God, those drove me insane. I gave them away or sold them or something because right. I, I don't know. I mean, I can see why they would use something like that because it's so damn efficient, you know, like just being able to put a cup of bees in it. But right. man, I like being able to throw another super on it. I'm using fives, which I mean, close enough, you know, five over Ooh. five. And I even got right. some. I've got some little queen excluders for them, and I've got mediums, which I know. Well, I'll tell you the reason. I got started uh, with the four framers because I I made some of those Palmer double nuke boxes where you had, you know, they're a 10 frame box with a divider, so you only get four frames in there. Well, I made these for the second stories. Well, um, I didn't have very good luck with the 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 bottom box for whatever reason. I don't know if it was pheromones or whatever. Um, so I ended up getting rid of those, but I, but I kept the, the individual boxes You're and just you made them over like a deep or something like another colony or what, what were you saying? What wasn't working? No, out? It's basically four frames on either side of a deep. So you got a deep and you put a yeah. divider in it. So okay. you got four cones, four cones. Um, and that's, that's the, those Palmer nukes. That's what they are is basically you've got an entrance going each way. Um, but does I just he, never had. Does he put like an excluder down and then set both of them? Or not? Yeah. Oh, he yeah. So you go in, you can go into a hive and shake a couple of frames of brood and drop them in those. Put your queen excluder and then put two of those side by side. Yep. And come back the next morning and they'll, all those nurse bees will come back up and then you can pull them off. Nice. So, but, uh. Yes. Right. Well, and then I, so I started making individual bottoms for them and tops. Oh, um, and that's, bottoms. yeah. So then that's, that's part of the reason. So um, I'm the same way though. I don't like having a bunch of different size equipment, um, but inevitably in beekeeping, you always end up with stuff, you know, yeah, that's the truth. Or you're always trying to tinker with something or make something or, or whatever so definitely um, i had a bunch of oh old lids that i made into some of those double screens that bob benny talks about i thought about tinkering with that a little bit this year but it's one of those springs that i probably won't need them because it's going to be warm you know usually i have issues with cold snaps you know yeah. um but i've got them they'll sit there and when i need them you know, I'll probably use them. I don't see this year being an issue, but yeah, you know, you never know, yep. so yeah, it doesn't look like it. I know last year I had snow on cell builders, which right. didn't miss a beat. I mean, of course, they were completely loaded with bees, but right. smells look good, queens were fine. So, that, that last round of snow that we got in April last year, I put queen cells in the day before, yeah. <laughs> yeah. mine were now the builders yet but man yeah so the first round last year i did the week before that snow and i think i got like 95 percent take on those did you really? um, <laughs> the ones i put in the week of the snow i got like 60 yeah, yeah. like <laughs> man you know sometimes it's hard to tell because i've had it whenever it was whenever it was rainy out even and I guess they had enough time to get out that, that that did really well. And then there's other times, even whenever things look good, you know, I'd get like a 50 or 60% take. So I don't know. So, sometimes I think there's stuff going on in there that we're not really aware of too, you know? No, I would agree with that a hundred percent. It's going to be great. Everything's lining up and you go through there and there's just a ton of misses, you know, I don't know. Yeah. It's big keeping though. Oh Yeah. Well, and that's, um, that was, I was talking about like getting Queens made it. That was um, yeah, not, yeah, not yeah. the queen cell side of it. Um, right. but we, even, even down in Texas, we had the same, same stuff happen all the time. Yeah. You know, weather down there is beautiful and you know, one round you'll get 95% take exactly. next round 50%. Yep. And it's like, everything was the same. The weather is the same, you know, Exactly. But, I think it's just beekeeping, regardless of where you're at, or at least that I don't know if it's viruses messing with them or if it's drift or something's picking them off. I don't, I mean. Right. Yeah, it could be 
a wind gust blew him to another county. Yeah, <laughs> right, was, exactly. You know, <laughs> you know a flock of blackbirds come through right whenever they were leaving, or I, who knows? Like yeah. it's yeah, you yeah, might have plan for it though. You know, just yeah. It. Well, yeah, just don't get discouraged about it because mm-hmm. you know it's it's going to happen. So. I remember whenever uh, I first started selling queen cells, you know, like, I'm like, yeah, I got this. I figured it out. And this dude was going to come buy a bunch of them, you know, and he's, he calls me and I'm out there looking in the colony, you know, which was, it was good a couple of days ago. I don't remember what happened. If something uh, virgin drifted in or what, but I go in there, I'm like, yeah, might as well turn back around, bro. <laughs> There's not one of them left in here. So you could just see where she had gone through there and tore them all down. But, oh yeah, but that was when I was just running one cell builder and stuff. Like now, I just expect somebody to fail or something to go goofy. I just try to overcompensate, you know, and just yeah. run more cell builders. Well, the thing it's gonna sound bad, but like I plan to probably run somewhere between five and eight cell builders this year. Yep. Um, and I mean be honest with you if i have too many cells and i can't find somebody to buy them i'll just throw them on the ground you know yeah i mean i need to do that but um but you got to anticipate that some of them you know you're gonna they're gonna look great you got a good take and then you go back and you pull that frame and they tore half of them down yeah exactly it's like you know and there's no i got kind of you know, like you said, if you don't use them or can't get rid of them, they're, I mean. Right. Yep. Or even put two of them in a the nuke, you know, I mean. Sure, yeah, I've done that before. The first, the first one that hatches is the one that's probably going to make it, but, you know. Somebody's going to win. <laughs> at, least, at least then you don't feel bad about throwing it on the ground, so. Yeah, yeah, but, it takes the guilt away. Right. <laughs> But yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna do things a little bit different this year as far as queenery. So instead of been using like whole hives, and this year I'm just yeah. gonna go out and pull brood and uh basically have single cell builders, so yeah, stocked cell builders. So stocked. yeah. Um just because I don't want to have big monstrous hives at my house. <laughs> so, Man, I big mine because I had them too close to the house, you know, and like there's right. always like, somebody out of that. Well, it's just like a whole city of humans, you know. If there's a million of them out there, there's going to be one or two jerks, you know, that yeah. can bother you while you're mowing the yard or whatever. I kind of moved yep. them back a little bit out of my orchard, so they don't bother us really like they did. But you know, I'm like. I'll just move them over here. And Jamie's like, oh, okay, yeah, you can have a few over there. Now they're like from uh, all the way up here, strung all the way down to the bottom of the field. There's a, this well, I live, a big yard. I live, uh, I mean, I'm in the country, but it, we've got like this little community down here. Um, and last year I ran out of places to put nukes on the ground. <laughs> so I, I literally filled my front yard and my backyard full of, nukes and my neighbors like there's like what what are all these little yellow boxes everywhere and i was like oh they're bees and they're like well we noticed there was a bunch of bees all over our flowers we were wondering what was going on i was like yeah it's because there's like 50 nukes in our front yard yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly you know? <laughs> so yeah. but they were cool. like, these things are in my trash can you know yeah like, I go, well, do you have a bunch of soda cans in there or something? She's like, yeah. I go, man, you probably want to put a lid on it or something because I can't get them to go away, you know, because it's basically it was in July or something when there's nothing out there, you know. And so they found Coca-Cola or Mountain Dew, you know, corn syrup in the can. And, man, once they they can lock on to it, too, it's almost impossible. I was getting ready to say, once they get – once they get locked into it, man, they get relentless and they can be little witches, man. Yeah, for sure. Get, At least they until get the nectar feisty. Turns on. Oh, yeah. yeah. For sure. Once the nectar flow kicks back in, they're not really worried about the soda cans anymore, but man, until then. So, now, so the, when we were moving all the hives out in yards uh, last Thursday that came off the semi from California, um, we had that snow and ice coming in. Yeah. Well, I had 20 highs. Like the last load that I hauled out when I went to load the loader, 
it like slid sideways on the trailer and i was like i'm done like yeah. i'm not I'm not, <laughs> I'm not taking a sideways ride off the yeah. off the trailer with the loader and yeah. and actually the the a couple of the beehive pallets kind of shifted when i turned a corner they kind of slid on the truck a little bit yeah and i was like i'm done so i left there was 20 hives still sitting on my gravel pad in front of my warehouse and uh it hit 65 degrees the other day and holy cow yeah. i mean they were trying to get in everything <laughs> you know they come back from california they're used to having trees everywhere blooming and they're like you know they're in everything trash cans you open a door they're in the house it's like <laughs> all right we got so i moved them out the other morning so yeah I bet that probably stalls them out a little bit, but man, I bet they're primed. They'd probably be the first oh, one yeah. to warm in your area. I bet as much honey as they have on them. Yeah, they'll dip a little bit just because, you know, you lose some bees in transit, you know, and then they come back and there's basically nothing here. I will say there's pollen coming in. Yeah. Um, so, but, you know, a strong hive like that can go through a frame of honey a day. Oh, yeah. You know, so even though there's you know the whole top deep's full i mean you figure 10 pounds of honey a day they can go through depending on high strength you know and if there's nothing coming in but pollen you know you you only got so many days before they're they're going backwards so yeah, definitely even though i was scraping honey off the other day i actually went ahead and put some feed on because we're supposed to have like three days of rain so it'll yeah. give them something to do and we just got keep rain here today going. Yeah, it rained all day today. So I know there's a lot of people sometimes they'll talk about my bees are have too much honey or whatever, you know, in the springtime. Do I need to extract it? I'm like, man, once I, once they start brood rearing, they will vaporize that honey that's left in there. I mean, even to the yeah. point to where some of them get in hard times, you know, if they brood up too quick because of that. And or if your colony is on the verge of death and they just didn't eat it, you know, I yeah. guess that's a that's a possibility, but yeah, I would I would say in Missouri that probably a big percentage of the stuff you see where people like, well, you know, my bees died out over the winter and they just now opening their hive in April. Yeah. You know, and you can tell they starved, you know, and it's like, no, I'd say that and they had brood, so you know they made it, you know, past winter. Oh, and it's like yeah, you know. You know, they there's like like we said earlier, there's a lot of bad information out there and people telling people a lot of bad stuff. You know, don't yeah. get in your hives and you know, don't open don't don't get in yeah. the hive whenever it's 30 degrees outside. Well my hives get looked at when it's 30 degrees outside. Yeah. Like I'm not afraid to go out there and pop the lid and yeah. and you know, when they're clustered, you can clearly tell how much honey's above them, you oh, know. Yeah. yeah. Not only that, I mean we're, we're grading and stuff in 30 degree temperatures. We're loading trucks in 30 degree temperatures and shipping them across the United States in 30 degree temperatures. Yeah. You're, you're not going to do that much damage now getting in them, pulling frames and stuff like that. Yes. Right. You know, yeah. Um, Roll a crane or something maybe. Right. Right. Um, one of, one of the hives that I sent to almonds this year, the top deep, the whole corner was rotted out of it it was 35 degrees and I was like, I got to switch this deep out. You know, yeah. what do I do? I switched the deep out. They'll be all right. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they didn't have any brood in them, you know? So I just basically sit there and put the frames right back in the same order in the deep and they come back, look like rock stars. So, I mean, yeah. um, but there's, there's a lot of learning curves there too. So, uh, yeah, that's I've done a lot of dumb stuff. That's how I learned oh, yeah. a lot of things is just like, well, I'm never going to do that again, you know, because of. Right. Yeah. I, I can tell you a lot of ways of killing bees because yeah. I've done it. Yeah. <laughs> Same here. I've had like Got giant it. nucleus colonies that I delivered like fatties and not have enough ventilation or I switched them to another box and they all bull rush the screen and clog it. And just freaking mm -hmm. roast, man, just overheat. You know, I've done that before too many times. But oh, I forgot to open entrances on nukes. Yep. Come back, come back a week, come back a week later, and 
like, man, oh, like, why weren't, weren't there no bees in the air? Right. Yeah. You know, well, pop the first, pop the first lid and it smells rotten, you know, because yeah. bees are all dead in the bottom of it. It's like, oh, yeah. I forgot to. Well, the bees aren't in the air because they got stuck in the box. Yeah. So. I did that on a, a couple of nukes. They weren't real big and it was early enough. It wasn't real hot. And I didn't, I don't know how long they were there. It wasn't a week. But whenever I pulled the entrance, they were okay. But man, were they ready to get out of there. They came just yeah. out of there. But yeah, I've baked them before just with inadequate ventilation. And that's what I wonder too. On Does anybody run, like if they run custom four-way pallets, does anybody put like a screen, not like a whole screen bottom, but like a screen gap for airflow under the pallet or are they pretty much all solid? Uh, no, there's guys that run screen, screen pallets. Um, in fact, I've got some, uh, they're real popular in Florida uh, yeah. just because of the temperatures and stuff down there. Yep. They actually run a six-way pallet. Um, really? Yep. A six-way pallet and uh, they're screen bottoms. Um, I've got several of them because we bought some some bees come back from Florida, from California. There were Florida bees one year and we still use those pallets to haul equipment and stuff around. Yeah. But, uh, they, they're pretty popular down there. Those six way pallets are real popular to them. So yeah, I hate them. That center hive is a pain to work. Yeah. Uh, so it's like two, four, six, like long ways on it. Yeah. So they're, they're facing the entrances are all facing, you know, away or to the side. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but yeah, they were fully screened. Um, <laughs> But yeah, you can you can order, you can have pallets custom made that are that are screen bottoms. Yeah, uh, I'm just not a screen bottom guy. Just yeah. not a fan. Of them. You know, I know there's a lot of people that are, but um, I run I'm a just, lot of them. I've got both. I've got I've got screens and solids. The thing about that I like about the screens is I don't know if they do anything for bro. I've seen different results on that, but it seems like if I if I pull the top off or if it's really cold out, I never see condensation in the screens. But sometimes whenever those clusters tighten up, you know, because like in the in the summertime, they're just pumping the air through there, you know. Oh, yeah. It seems like whenever they tighten up in the wintertime, I don't think they can circulate the air as good. I think that's when you get a little bit of condensation, a little bit of mold in there, it seems like. But like I said, I've got both, but I think that's if I had to say one thing about screens is I think that they they keep them a little drier. Right. Yeah. And we'll see. Like on off. my lids. So like on my lids, uh, the shimming on my lids, I leave a little gap in the oh, corners. Cool. That's a good idea. Uh, not enough for bees to get in and out, but enough for circulation. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I typically don't see a whole lot of condensation either. So that's good. You know, uh, so the one I saw it in where it was probably the man lake five framers and I've got like two stories, but there's no shim. I mean, it's just a migratory lid that fits snug, you know, right. I mean, it, it's not like I feel like it kills them or anything, you know, it just seems like I saw it a bit more, but there's right. always a trade off. I mean, the screens, I don't know if they get colder, they may go through more stores or something. I don't know. No, I think if they were cold, the, if it kept them cooler, they'd go through less less stores because they'd be clustered longer. Oh, um, yeah. Um, my thing was with with the screen bottoms is um, it just seemed like a there was always a gap at the bottom where the queens would never lay. Mm. Um, and when I was running singles, because I ran singles there for a year or two, and uh, you know it was like it just the bottom edge of the brood, like she wouldn't lay full sheets of brood, you know, and I always figured it was because they can't, they can't control that temperature, especially in the spring in Missouri, when the temperatures drop, well, you know, and they, they cluster, you know, <laughs> yeah. so. but I mean, to each his own, you know, right. everybody's got their own thing. So. Um, yeah. I've got both. Like I said, I, I mean, I don't feel strongly enough about it to do away with everything else I got. We'll say, the one downside to the screen bottoms is 
you will poke a fork through them with a forklift every oh, once in a while. So, yeah, for sure. Whereas whenever you've got when you've got solid bottoms, uh, um, you don't have to worry about that. that. <laughs> yeah. Good so, point. <laughs> Good so point. like, because I've tore up because like I said, those those pallets that I got <clears throat> that were that come from Florida with those hives that we bought that one year. Um, I use them for hauling equipment around. Yeah, because they're just handy. I can throw thirty six deeps on them, you know, and they've got the yeah. cleats, so they hold everything, and it's just easy to move equipment around on. So I've been using them for that, and most of the screens have got holes poked in them from forks. Yeah, you know, yeah. <laughs> or you or you you take it and you move it over and you drop it right on a, a tree stump, a yeah. tree stump or something, you know, and so I could see that uh, happen where I'm at too. It just, to me, it'd just be one more thing for me to have to fix all the time. So it's like, yeah. eh. So, but I'm on getting a bunch of queens out of those breeders this year. I do. Um, both I actually checked both of them today. They're both still alive. One is doing way better than the other. Awesome. For whatever reason. Um, yeah. I'm just going off with the cluster size. Yeah. Um, I know they're the last time I checked, both of them were laying. So Sweet. um but yeah, I plan on grafting off uh, both of them. I've got uh, two of my own queens from last year. That uh, one of them, one of them was a le- the one of the last, not the last, but one of the last rounds that I've grafted. She's done really good. Mm. And then one of them um, was an absolute rock star of a hive all year, um, and it was the biggest hive that I sent to California. And she came back even bigger. And that's one thing I, you know, I've got the last two years, I've tried to rear off my own stuff. That's yeah. You know, that's I made it through. Cause I think it's, it, the, it's also a, your process, whatever your process you have, you're going to have bees that perform good with what you do. Um, that's really true. Yep. And that's, that's why I try to breed off my own stock because if, if, she made it through, you know, all summer, all winter, went to California, come back, and she still looks like a rock star. Good. And, yeah. you know, I want to graft off that because, you know, we all want all of our hives to look like that. Yeah, so Exactly. Um, well, you definitely want to reproduce that for sure. So it's more like, for me, like my own breeders, I kind of, it's a year-long grading process. You know, I kind of keep track of the ones that are doing really, really good. And, you know, some of them look like really good in the summertime and then they get to the fall and Something wham, happened. they're just, yeah. they're gone, you know? Yeah. Um, but this one individual hive I posted, I think it was in November and I mean, it was, I know it was December, but it was a, it was a cluster from the top board to the bottom I mean, it was just two deeps full of bees. bees. And everybody's like, man, I bet that thing's starving. I'm like, no, I can barely tip this thing. It's heavy. Yeah. It is super heavy. It's one of the heaviest hives I sent to California. That's and awesome. she come back looking awesome. So yeah. I'm going to breed off of her. And then I've got two Minnesota Hygienics I'm going to breed off of. And then I got the two uh, VSH that I'm going to breed off of from you. So man, that's a good combination. Yeah, I think the... Genetics is the key. I think we've, we've talked about this several times. I believe genetics is the key. Um, we're just not there yet. You know, yeah, the bees aren't there yet. We trust me. We want to be there. Like I, yeah. all the commercial guys want to be there. They, they don't want to be treating, you know, it's just yeah, more expensive yeah. for them, you know? Yeah, exactly. You know, so, um, a lot, you're old. And of course you don't have a lot of them left anymore, but the old timers, you know, you know, talk about, you know, the old time days, you know, and I can, I can remember them because my dad was beekeeping in those days, you know, you know, and it's now it's more difficult because of mites. Big time. Um, I would say exponentially more difficult. Yeah. I mean, it's not just them. It's all the uh, nasties they carry too. you know, viruses and stuff stuff that pops up and even if you whack your mite some of it's still in there you know until it kind of right. turns over it's just it's it's weird but like with that degree i was taking it's entomology so it's just bugs that's what i went to school for 
And like, that's all they talk about is IPM, IPM, IPM. So, I mean, it's similar with row crop or whatever, or same with bees, you know, you're just trying to find sampling thresholds so you know when you need to treat, you know, which that's right. a lot of work and whatnot. But they always say the holy grail of any IPM program is host resistance. So if you don't have, you know, if they have no resistance whatsoever, there's no way in hell you're going to get to where you can't just constantly treat them, you know, and you're still going to have to hit them, you know, most likely with, with, uh, with good genetics, especially if you're migratory or you get up close to something and they're robbing somebody's bees, you know, or whatever, however right. they get them, you know what I mean? But it just gives them an edge, you know, like, like uh, I guarantee if you might wash some of those VSH side by sides with some of the others, you'll see a difference. It's not like they won't get them. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. You have some that actually get a decent load if they're, you know, robbing something out or whatever. But those, the daughters, let go. Are, they'll just shut down reproduction. So they'll drift and get them. They just won't let them reproduce. But, right. Well, and that's part of, you know, what I keep track of too um, is, you know, on your IPM, part of your IPM is, is, you know, you're going to have, you're going to have the outliers, the ones that, you know, no matter what you do, they're, they just die. Right. You know? it's true. You know? But you also are going to have those outliers that with the way you, the IPM that you have, they're, they're going to, you know, peak out and they're going to do really good. Yep. And that's the ones that I usually try to mark, you know, if, like I said, if they're, if they're going through, you know, my IPMs and our flows and our weather and all this stuff Work. and they're, and they're doing, you know, yep. ex, ex, exceptional like that. I want to reproduce that because I don't plan on changing. I mean, I'll change my IPM if I need to, but you know, I'm, we're creatures of habit. So, you know, we kind of have a clock, you know, yep. most commercial guys do, you know, things in the process you know yeah. um you know you split in the spring you know you honey supers on after the honey flow you're usually treating for yeah. mites you know and so on and so forth so everybody's got that that uh layout that they follow and if these hives are exceptional with your layout you know and you want to keep making them that way or yeah. try to so yeah but i mean for me i mean i'm open to mating so you know i try to keep you know, especially this year i'm trying to keep everything real close to try to breed back to my own stock but yeah you're also going to get feral stock in there oh yeah so. it's inevitable but i think if you keep mixing up what really loves your area and your operation and then mixing in right. some mineral hygiene and mixing in some bsh I think you're going to see positive results. Like, I mean, it, like you said, it's not going to be a silver bullet, you know what I mean? Where you can just throw, throw all the treatments away and never look at them again. I don't know that that's realistic, but yeah. maybe, maybe eventually, I don't know, you know, it just depends on where the industry goes and what, what stuff we figure out. We don't know yet. Cause I'm sure there's a ton of that, you know? Well, and we've got, I think there's more research going on now with bees than there oh, yeah. ever has been. There is. And, yep. um, you know, like Cayman and Jack and uh, mm -hmm. uh, what's the other guy down there? Oh, my goodness. Jamie um, Ellis. Jamie Ellis. Yeah. <laughs> I forgot that name. Yeah. You know, you got Jamie and all them. And, mm -hmm. you know, I think Marla Spivik's getting ready to start doing some stuff again with the Minnesota Hygienics. And, I mean, there's just a ton of research going into bees. Oh, yeah. yeah. Which is a good thing. Don't get me wrong. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, Hopefully we'll right. It's worth having out of it. I'm I'm one of those bee nerds, you know. So like, whenever Cayman was up there this last year at the at the fall conference, you know, yeah, I was just sitting there, you know, I'm 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 listening hardcore, yeah. you know, yeah. like, you know, um, and some I'm of his awesome stuff, there. some of his stuff that he was talking about, it, it's stuff that I had seen, but I, I'm no scientist, you know, I'm yeah. just dumb farmer, but, um, it's like. It makes sense because I yeah. seen the same thing. I didn't know why I was seeing it, but I seen the same thing, you know. Yeah. And but now it's starting to make sense. And then I can't remember the. There's three of them that, or two, uh, two or three. Uh, Bob Benny's been doing some videos on yeah. the OA treatments. 
Mm-hmm. Well, the thing with uh, the uh, humidity effect in oxalic acid. Really? I didn't um, think about that. Yeah, I didn't think about it either. And that's so this whole time, uh, Randy Oliver has been having all this success with the OA out there in California, but it's like super right. dry out there. Yeah. But, you come into Missouri and Alabama and places like that, these guys are having, you know, they're not having the results that he's having. Well, they yeah. figured out that it's the humidity. Wow. Humidity fixed the effectiveness of the OA. So even time of day may be a factor then because I took some burn classes, like so I could burn my fields off and stuff, where I planted all those wildflowers and stuff. And yeah. um, there's models where you can do hourly and it'll show you the humidity levels and stuff. And like you can have a rager going through there and it seems like you get start going towards the evening or whatever and the humidity shoots up. It's like, whoop, like the fire will just go out. So right. I, I bet it makes a difference even, you know, around here where we have humidity, probably even more yeah. in the evening compared to midday, you know, it's going to be different. Yeah. That's wild. Yeah, you. And that's, I was, I, whenever that all started get, being talked about, I, Cause I have, I've done the the shop towel treatments and stuff and I never got the effectiveness that Randy Oliver was getting. And I was like, man, what the... well, Missouri in July is, you know, a hundred degrees and 95% humidity. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You can't stand Uh-oh. outside and not sweat. <laughs> oh yeah. No, you want like you take, you take a shower, you like you take a shower and you get home you get up next morning you put clothes on you walk out the door and you're instantly wet yeah it's yeah. like what in the world like <laughs> yeah. i went to the truck come on yeah. now that's the thing whenever i flew out to uh, washington whenever i learned to do ai with uh, sue i mean it was in july here so it's swamp tastic and you go up there it's like i can breathe it's so crazy i mean the air is just completely different but. Yeah, we went to we went from Missouri in July one year to Moab, Utah. Oh, nice! And you know, it's a hundred and six degrees in Moab, but you walk outside and you're like, "This." I mean, it felt like it was seventy here. <laughs> right. Like, yeah. it's a hundred degrees outside. Like, what is this? Yeah. You know? Yeah. I get back to Missouri and I was ready to die. They're like, <laughs> like, like I can't breathe. <laughs> yeah. Like. This, that, oh yeah, Missouri. Awesome. Missouri's humidity can get a little bit ridiculous. So, I love the fall and spring here, though. You know, yeah, it's hard to beat. I love Missouri. Period. Yeah. Like, of course, I was born and raised here. You know, I so yeah. Um, you know, going down to Texas last couple of springs. We didn't go down this year. Um, Texas is a tool. You know, it's, it, there's good and good things about Texas. I hate. I hate living in a motel. It just yeah. sucked. And yeah. uh, being away from the family and stuff. And um, But, I mean, if I need to go down there, I'll go down there in a heartbeat. It's not – but if I don't have to, I don't need to – I don't need to spend that expense because it's expensive yeah. doing that too, so. Sure. Well, I mean, moving them plus fuel prices are higher now. One of my buddies, sure. they bought a place in, southern, I guess, southern Mississippi somewhere. So he'll take a bunch of he don't I don't think he takes all of them down, but he takes a lot of them down. Gets an early start queen rearing and stuff. Right. Uh, then brings mm-hmm. them up back up to Missouri. But he was using like it was like a little four way. It looks like a almost like br- what Brother Adam or somebody was using. You know, there's holes on different sides of it, and I think it's like quarter or they're they're smaller than half frames like maybe quarter size frames or something yeah i mean they're efficient you know it's just man i'm trying to avoid that uh you know odd frame size if i now if i didn't have a day job and i was trying to crank out like 300 breeders a year or something like that i'm you know maybe i would look at something like that i don't know i still i don't know that i would though because then you can just you know drop a cell in it or whatever whatever after you pick them out and add another uh deep to it well, and the, feed thing, them out in the, the, the thing with those is like you're only running like a 14 to 21 day cycle and you're yanking that queen out and put a new one in because if you you just don't have the room for her to lay much longer than that yeah they get too you tired know? 
Whereas, you know, for me, you know, one, I'm not trying to produce, you know, a thousand queens. Well, right. not a thousand queens to sell. Right. <laughs> so, yeah. right. Exactly. Yeah. Man. So I can, you know, running, running in those deep boxes. I mean, I can let her lay for, you know, month. two months, you yeah. know, I can drop, drop a cell in there and come back a month and a half later. And yeah, it's going to be a boiled over mess, Yeah, but, um, but she's not, you know, she won't be swarmed out, you know, and those little, those little mini mating nukes, those guys run on a 14 to a 21 day cycle. Yeah. I mean, they're just pulling queens out constantly and putting a new queen cell in. So, um, but that's what works good for them. And they're trying to, you know, some of those guys probably make hundreds of thousands of queens. Yeah, and, that's mind blowing. Oh yeah, yeah. So, I've no intention to do that. I'd like to. I like to think I'd. I would just want to do bees, you know. But like I said, we'll we'll see what it whenever i get there mm -hmm. i don't know yeah queen rearing i enjoy it i love it but i also i like producing my own queens because yeah i think i think in the end i get i i personally think that i get better quality when i make them myself not yeah. not to diss anybody because i know there's a lot of good queen breeders out there i'm not saying that Same um, here. <clears throat> but it seems like I have better luck with the ones that I raise myself. And I think it's because, you know, I'm, I'm raising off my own stock and that do good with my, my process, your management, your area. My main, your yeah. Courses. So, um, but I mean, I still will buy a few Queens just mm -hmm. to keep, you know, genetics in, under control too. So don't get, yeah. don't get me wrong, but it seems like, every year the ones that are the exceptional ones that i have are usually mine mm -hmm. so um, which i don't but, buy a lot of i don't buy any open mated queens anymore i'll buy some uh different breeding stock occasionally which i've kind of gotten to where after i started vsh testing unless it's really something really high vsh you know what i've got was scoring better than what i was buying so right. same same concept you know, and I, I'm just, I'm going to kind of let my model work its magic and see what happens. I think I can just make them better and better. Right. <clears throat> well, I just do it mainly uh, because I know I'm open mating. So, you know, I guess I could, I should, shouldn't have to worry about it, but I do. I order a couple hundred every year just to, mm -hmm. you know, keep the, keep the stock diversify there's diverse the diversified yeah so well, um, keeps in breeding at bay you know and gives you yeah fresh stuff to work with some of it'll be good some of it won't you know and then you right. can pick you know, whatever like you said whatever does best and pick out of that graft out of it right and i think like whenever you use those breeders like you got well, those daughters will be pure vsh so any regardless of what they mate with all those daughters will make straight vsh drones right so i mean you could have yards of vsh drones you know and then mix it up with your stock that's just blowing up two deeps you know and get a blend of that where that's got some vsh in it and they're still really productive too i think that's right. where it's at i do too and i mean that's part of the reason why i bought those queens from you is because you know you've got you're doing a good job down there and what you're doing, you know, um, I mean, you're, you're not treating and you're, you're doing it and you know, I don't, I don't anticipate ever. I mean, ever not having to treat, um, yeah. just that's the nature of the beast. Like, especially yeah. with going to California and stuff, my bees don't, you know, they get introduced to mites. They, you know, they just, yeah, it's just one of those deals, but anything I can do to help them um, is, is the goal, you know, exactly. and, and maybe to have to treat less. Yeah. Um, and if, I, you're, if your treatment doesn't work, like we've seen occasionally, you know, right. something, something's up, like the humidity is too high or, you know, I've heard a lot of complaints over some of the Amitraz products, you know, like didn't kill like they were supposed to. Um, 
then if you've got that little bit of a backup, it's not as big of a deal. You know what right. I mean? They won't just get their asses completely. Well, that's the thing. Like, I see a lot of a lot of people on Facebook. You know, it seems like anymore that's the number. That's the first question that comes up, which I don't see the bad side of that. Is you know, what, what did you treat, or what did you treat with, or you know? And a lot of times they're like, "Yeah, I treated with this," and it's like, "Okay, you treated, but did you did you did you check?" your mite numbers yeah post treatment and after treatment did your treatment do anything yeah you know because if you're buying <clears throat> let's just say apivar strips if you're buying apivar strips i mean i am not i have no doubt that somewhere in there there's probably some apivar strips that aren't good something you know up, like, yeah, didn't get yeah something happened or, or whatever yeah. you know yeah um, they sit on the shelf too long. The package got a rip in it or something, you know, it got sp- exposed dried to air, dried out, you know, something, you know, there's inevitably something that has probably happened. So did it, was it effective? You know, did you, yeah, you threw that treatment in there and it gave you a false pot or a false sense of security, right. but, did it, but did it actually do anything to, for your mind? You know? And they're like, you know, most of the time when I ask that, they're like, no, we didn't do that. Well, we might, you know, we're talking about talking about, you know, sacrificing 300, 300 bees to know, you know, whether or not your treatment did anything. And otherwise you're just throwing money. And then, you know, in the end, you're still having to buy queen there to buy bees because your treatment didn't work, you know? Yeah. Well, it was at that meeting that Cameron Jack was at, the MSBA meeting. Um, There's some people I know from Kate that uh, said that they had used it, you know, the Amitraz based one. Is that Apivar? Yeah. Okay. They used Apivar and went back and washed them afterwards just to make sure it worked. I was impressed they did that because I think most people just throw it in there and forget about it and assume that they're good. But they went back yeah. and they're like, it didn't work. I would, I don't want to put words in their mouth, but I, it seemed to me like at all, or yeah. very little kill, like it what did. And they had called Man Lake and were complaining about it, you know. But I think there were other people that. So I wonder, was the dosage too low? Because remember when Cameron was talking, like the approved dose is one gram. The dose you should use is four times that. You know, is that, you know what I mean? Is that the same way with Amitraz? Like, did they approve yeah. too low of a dose or is it just something? Well, I think we also talked, I, I think that that's almost a sub-lethal um, that's amount. That's the worst. Yeah, you do not want to do that. Like on an IP yeah, yeah, perspective, that is way worse than hitting them with a hot dose. Because yeah, if you just and, give them a little bit, it just, it seems like they build resistance even faster. Yeah, um, because we talked about that at the meeting, um, and I think that's part of the problem that we're having, um, in my opinion, uh, with with Apivar is it it's it's on that verge of being a sub lethal treatment, Uh and and that's why we're having mites that are getting resistant to it because you know, any time that you do do that that's yep. what happened it's just like yeah, antibiotics you know exactly the same way yeah you know, we've, got, we've got around it. right we've got viruses that we deal with or not viruses but we have uh infections that we deal with that are becoming antibiotic resistant You're exactly because right. you know we a don't take the like it says on the bottle don't you know the, take three yeah hours. we don't we don't we don't take them all, you know, or or we we do something, or we just or the dose was was too long, too low for too long, and yeah. they built up resistance, you know. Yeah, so, um, yeah. But yeah, I know a commercial guy that used Abivar here a couple of years ago and almost got wiped out. Ooh, so it didn't do its job. No. Yeah. And he said the same thing, you know. It gave him a false sense of security, and. You know, he used it the year before and it was great. Yeah. He had the best bees he'd ever seen. So he thought, well, I'll just buy the strips, throw them in there, and, you know, everything will be good. Whether it was 
something's different about the strips or he got a bad batch of strips. I, I he don't know. And I don't know, but yeah. all I know is, you know, he was scrambling and hurting. So, yeah. Uh, so gosh, so Man. I don't test every hive, but yeah, that would I'll be test like, time consuming. Right. Yeah. So I'll test like, I'll test like so many hives in a yard mm -hmm. and, um and then post treatment i'll i'll test the same hives so at least i know that my treatment is effective yeah. now you're still like i said earlier you're going to have those outliers yeah you know even though you treated you know they they show all the signs of mites and then you can wash them and they got a, a ton of mites yeah why yeah. you know who knows but exactly yeah um man yeah you know, there is a lot. Yeah, of for me, go ahead. For me, I there there's just no possible way for me to to test every hive. Just yeah, no possible. I don't way. think it's feasible. I mean, I think I think Ian Ian does like ten percent in a yard. It's about what I do. About ten percent yeah. a yard. Go it's in a good and good estimate of what it looks like. Yeah. 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 So like a yard of twenty four, I'll do like three hives. You know, and. Then when I come back after post treatment, I'll check Set the same on. three hives. As long as as long as I'm seeing effectiveness, yeah. you know. Um, but every once in a while, you come across a hive in the yard that went through the same treatment and everything else, and they're obviously having mite issues. When you can see the mites on them, you know, you know yeah. you're already too yeah. late, you know. Yeah. So, um, but, I wonder what's going to be next because Amitraz was such a good one. You know, if, if they don't give too many sublethal dosages, you would think it would last quite a while. But I don't know if there is resistance or if it's just crappy strips, you know, or inconsistent product. Yeah, you know, I don't. Know well, how how, we, how are you ever going to know? You know, because I like I don't I don't know how you would test those strips to the effectiveness of each individual strip, you know, and probably smarter than me would have to do that. So it's probably some kind of lab analysis or something, you know, to the concentration of it or, you know, but I mean, but it's know, also, it could, could be a lawsuit that, if it's guaranteed to be a certain percentage and it's not there. Yeah. But that's also why you, you don't want to treat with the same thing over and over and over again. You want to have, you know, yep different things um yep. i'm I, I really do like oa in the winter time mm -hmm. i've been doing that for a couple of years um yep. and uh i still cool. use oa too it's like it's that and formic which i don't hear people talk as much about formic as they used to but it says like well in the scientific literature whatever it says that it doesn't say they can't develop a resistance to it but it said they're very low risk right i mean that one uh it seems like it's a pretty good option you know like you said especially in the winter time when they're broodless you know yeah. plus if there's no residue it's just an organic acid you know it just vaporizes and you don't have to worry about right. it getting at home and stuff and jacking with your queens or your brood correct yeah, the only downside to OA is is whenever you know in the summertime it's not very effective for two reasons. Obviously, humidity. humidity. Yeah. Um, but the other is the amount of brood that you have in a hive. Oh, so, yeah. Um, that's why I like it for the fall and winter uh, when they start going broodless. Yeah. And then when they're completely broodless, I'll hit them a couple of times before they ever go to California. Yeah. Those fifty degree days, I'll go out there and hit them with Plain OA. Yeah. That way, I know when I send them, they're as low as I can possibly get them. Um, and you know, some I have I have not seen them. I'm not saying they ain't there because I'm sure they're there. But all the hives that I busted, all these deeps, um, I didn't see one mite in any of the drone brood. So nice. that's um, awesome. I know that they were they were low, um, but. Uh, so I do like it in the wintertime in the fall. So yeah. I'm not a fan of formic acid. Yeah. Not a fan at all. Like it doesn't <laughs> work or what did you not? Yeah, it kills mites. 
but it kills bees too. Oh, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> and you better you better really watch the temperatures um, because the temperatures the temperature range on that it actually should be lower than what it says on the label because. Um, What's the label? Isn't it like as long as it's not ninety five or something like? Yeah, that? it's like eighty. It's like ninety degrees and below, okay. like forty to ninety. Yeah. Well, I put I put a couple of years ago. I tried it for the first time, and and it was it was not summer, but it was fall. Yeah. And I smoked a bunch of queens. Really. And it was in the temperature range. Um, they were just, done. They just went. Oh yeah. After that. Yeah, they were, they were fried. Like, I was just like, "Yep, not doing that anymore." <laughs> not using like, that anymore. Dude. <laughs> I'd heard like some people say it will totally shut your queens down. This is all hearsay. I don't have any. Like, I've used it back in the day, but I used it before it was even Mite Away Quick Strips. It was like the f- old Formic pads. Yeah. You know, last time I've used it, but I, I've heard people say that they would just totally shut down laying, like just stop for a little while and then like eventually would pick it back up. But right. It's really well, weird. and the sucky part is the formic will kill, kill the mites under the cappings. Um, yeah. That's what I'd always heard. Like, but I guess oxalic won't do that for some reason. It doesn't it penetrate. Not, yeah. It won't penetrate the cappings for whatever reason. I don't know. I don't know what the difference there is, but um, that's a scientific level. Yeah. <laughs> exactly something on a molecular level or something yeah um but yeah i smoked i smoked a couple of yards of queens and it was very costly and i was like yep I'm done the last and, time yeah. right i mean i was i was in the temperature range now i will say towards the upper it was it i put them in it was in the lower but then we got kind of a warm spell so it got in the uppers but um but yeah i I smoked some hives, smoked yeah. some queens bad. And I was like, yeah, that ain't worth it, you know? Yeah. So. Crazy. But. Man, so you're doing a bunch of, are you doing nuke sales this year again? Is yeah. It? Yeah, doing, still selling nukes. Um, you still got some left? Yeah, still got nukes left. Um, if people wanted to pick some up from you, what's the best way, like, to get a hold of you website or emails or what would you what's the best way to if they wanted to order well you can find me find us on facebook obviously um we do have a website it's paul's honey farm llc.com um and you can order through there uh if you contact me through facebook i got several payment options so sweet Um, could you have the store and the website to where they can or how do you arrange that? Do they send you a message to the website or does it have it where they can swipe a card or something in order? Yeah, they can they can pay with a card through my website. Oh, cool. Nice. Yeah. Um, if they contact me to direct, I I mean I'll take a check. Um yeah. I got Venmo, PayPal, so um several different options. So where'd you do your uh, website through? Uh Wix. Yeah, that's what we did too. I like it. Yeah. It's, it's not great. Yeah, it's not. I mean, but it for a simple website, it was easy, you know. I just made it look kind of the way I wanted to, and then Jamie made it look like a kindergartner didn't put it together. <laughs> but I think it works okay. Like I don't ever have to jack with it, you know. Like and, I, and right. it's got an app on my phone. Like if I want to adjust inventory or something or send a message, like it seems to yep. me like it works pretty good, but. Yeah. It works really good for me. Um, and then I use uh I use Excel for all my yeah my nuke spreadsheet and all that stuff. So um keep track of all that stuff because I do if it's offline, like I'll use uh like in Google Drive or Google Sheets, you know, it updates automatically. You know, like if somebody doesn't want to pay with a card, you know what I mean, they want to pick up or pay, I'll put it on my sheet, you know, and then right. everything else the website keeps track of. Right. I got to write it down because there's no way I'd remember it. Yeah, that's, that's, I mean, this thing yeah. right here, I mean, I've got all my, all my apps on my phone. I've got my, my spreadsheets on my phone and yep. just, it works. And it, it does. It keeps me, of course, my calendar, everything's on my phone anymore. So, same here. Uh, 
I don't know what I would do if I lost this because yeah, nah. I, I would be, I'd be lost is what I'd be. So. <laughs> It'd be yeah. a major setback for sure. Right. Do you plan us? I've already got some queens sold. I'm going to sell a few queens this year. Nothing big because um, I don't want to be a a big queen breeder. So yeah. What do you What are you getting out of them? Thirty five. That's a good price. So, and then we'll sell some cells and stuff too. And it kind of depends. Uh, if I have extras, about? I'll post them, you know. If yeah. nobody wants them, then I'll just get rid of them, whatever I need to do. So, don't um, but it too. also, huh? So don't sell them too cheap. Oh, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> no. Um, I think everything's gone up. Some of the, for some reason, sell prices, I don't think like on a commercial level, they don't keep up with, with mated queen prices, which there's a lot less labor involved in it too. But I still think if people have good stock, that they could get a little bit more out of it. You know, right. Because I remember around here, you know, they would sell them like three or four bucks a piece. Now, I mean, that's been, you know. I think I, years in years ago, past, I've always done like, uh, I think it was like, 10 cells or less was like ten dollars a piece but if they were yeah. if you were getting 10 or more cells you know they were five dollars a piece you know yeah yeah yep. um, then you can get rid of volume that way you know i definitely right on volume pricing which i don't i don't do i do some volume it just depends and i'll definitely cut people a price break you know if you want to get 100 or 200 queens at a time well you might have right. to give me you know give me a bit or let me figure out when i can get it in the schedule but they're during the busy season. I mean, we're we we have maybe three hundred or more than three, a little over three hundred a week, you know, coming off. But it's just like you know, April starts to ramp up. May is going crazy, and then like we don't get rain like mid June. I'm done. They just start right. giving, flying me the bird, you know. Whenever I keep putting graphs in there, it pretty much yeah, we'll be they're done. I'm done. Right. Well, see, I. April is like full on. Oh, yeah. And I want to try to get as many splits done and queen cells put in in April for myself. Nice. Um, that way I still got time to build up before the main flow hits. But as far as like in my home yard where I'm doing a lot of, of mating of queens, uh, just to have extra queens on hand or to sell, you know, I'll keep going a little, you know, for a while. But yeah. At one point, at some point, it's going to get too busy, and I'm just going to shut it down because you know I got to focus on the hives, and they're going to be getting into a honey flow, you know. So, okay. but if, so for me, it's you know this year I'm probably going to start a little earlier, but the month of April is just like as many queens as I can put get get on the ground, because um, you always have that percentage, you know, you put. A thousand hives on the ground you're only going to get 800 to 900 you know because that's the percentages yeah, yeah. yeah so um so i'll have a you know that's part of the the extra queens that i rear that i can go back and fill holes you know yeah so they won't make me any honey but they'll build up and you know hopefully i can get them the almonds or something that's what so. i was gonna say they'd be ready for almonds yeah right I, I sold, I wasn't going to sell a bunch of open mated nukes this year. And I'm not saying I'm selling a bunch, but I'm selling more than I thought I would. It, I don't know. It, you know, like one of the guys from class is like, oh, I really want BSH bees. I really want some of yours. You know, I'm like, well, I don't know. So I sold him some and I've got my customers. I try to just stick with my main people, you know, that I know. It just seems like, well, you know how it is dealing with the public. You always get get a few that are right. annoying or whatever. <laughs> right. It's inevitable. Well, I I have I have people that come back. You know, you know they bought a couple from me, and then you know they have one that dies, or you know, yeah, come grab. Maybe another. they don't have any die, but they've got they got hooked, so then they want a couple more, and yep. then a couple more. So I've got I got a lot of people that were you know. Uh, reoccurring customers and i have a lot of new customers too so 
Um, and then I got a couple of retailers. So we usually do a couple hundred nukes, um, nothing big. I don't want to do like you many did. more than that. I so. was going to say, like you were dead down in Texas for that, dude. Oh, yeah. They make yeah, ridiculous he, amounts of nukes. Yeah, he does thousands of them. Thousand, I think he's planning on doing a thousand this year, I think, too. So, yeah. now I have no desire to do that. Yeah. So, it's just, um, although it, I mean, it's good money and, yeah, you know, I agree. a lot of, a lot of, you know, a lot of B work, but it's a lot of work. And, yeah. you know, and you can kind of get your money a lot of times, whether, whether there's a great honey flow or not, you know, if there's a good enough flow to get a bunch of Queens made it, you know, and selling, of course, nuke prices are super high now. So, I mean, yeah. yeah, I think it's worth it, but like you said, it is a lot of, a lot of work. Well, and you have to, you have to be pretty well diversified in the business and in, in the industry anymore. Um, yeah. You can't, you can't just be a honey producer. My dad was just a honey producer. Um, that's what he did. And, you know, you can't do that anymore. You know, just, you won't, you know, you have a one, one bad year and, you know, what do you got? You know, yeah. there's, you know, there's been, you know, last year, if it wasn't for the nuke sales last year with the honey crop that we had, if it wasn't for the nukes and the almonds, you know, yeah. I'd be hurting right now. Oh yeah. You know? Yep. Um, Cause the honey crop wasn't there you know, so having that diversity, you know, some years you're going to, you're going to make money on, on honey crop. And then some years you're not, some years you're going to, you know, sell more nukes than you do other years. And, you know, yeah, for sure. I like the idea of diversifying, not put all your eggs in one basket. Yeah. Don't, don't, yeah. You can't do that anymore. So in, in my opinion, so, um, most of your guys, most of your big commercial guys are not, you know, solely one, one industry, you know, they, they, they do it all. So yeah. um, I will say like, it seems like the California guys, they don't get too much honey out there. Um, seems like they pretty much uh, raise oh, bees, sell Queens and do pollination. So yeah, a lot of Queens come out of there. Yeah. A lot of Queens. So, um, but for me, it's kind of a, a little bit of everything. Yeah. <laughs> so, it's a good but, policy. Yeah. Yeah. And I have fun doing it. I like, like queen rearing. I really enjoy the queen rearing. Um, but I have no desire of ever being a big queen breeder. You know, I like making nukes. I like, I like doing that, but I have no desire of being, you know, a big new guy. And who wants to lift thousands of pounds of honey? But, you know, um, and even almonds, I mean, it's good money, but you know, you, what you don't see is all the work that goes into getting your hives there, you know. That's why I was surprised you launched out of Missouri instead of going down to Texas and kind of let them build a little bit, which I thought it was cool that you can do that, you know, because I don't know what everybody does exactly. I know, uh, I guess, like you said, though, it may be 30 degrees and you got to dig through them and see what you got, you know, see who can yeah, go. Well, just- a lot of your northern guys have have to go down there because you know they're no you know north North dakota and wisconsin i mean you're talking about feet of snow whenever they're shipping bees to california so um we don't typically we don't get that now i'm sure it's going to happen um one of one of the guys i know in oklahoma he was loading a semi in the snow this year so he was shipping out of oklahoma (laughs) and it was snowing so um what are are most guys using hummer bees are they using a little bit of everything um hummer bees are getting a little more popular um they're not cheap man hmm. good lord well neither one of them are cheap bobcat or hummer either one so um i think i'm trying to remember uh i want to say a new hummer and this was last year i think the new Hummer was like 55,000. Uh, yeah, that's what I was thinking. Around and then if you wanted the the Hummer trailer was another like 8,500, uh, which is yeah. a, a custom trailer just for the Hummer B. Like, um, I um, am a Bobcat guy. Yeah. 
I was a, a operator in the union for years, ran equip heavy equipment and stuff. So I, I kind of grew up running skid steer, and yeah. for me, the skid steer is it was easy for me to learn. Um, with the Hummer B, you have that articulation in the middle. Um, yeah, that really it really messes with me. I've got a buddy. I've got several guys that I know that have them, and it's just it just really jacks with me. So yeah. I just I've never drove not, one. So um the bobcats of course we we customize them the industry customizes you know with a mast on the front and then we put a dolly wheel on the back yeah um so it actually picks it picks the back tires up so when you turn it's real smooth because it casters um so um but one of those customized bobcats isn't cheap you know i've got an old machine that i bought (laughs) it's actually like a 1970s bobcat yeah. Um, but I've put a new motor in it and went completely through it and it's basically a new machine. Yeah. Um, but uh it's uh I'm just I'm better with bobcats than I am others. So my um, buddy Greg had uh which it was a cab skid steer, but it was on tracks and he had that for a while and he got rid of it and got a Hummer B or maybe two of them. I know he's got at least one. Yeah. But he said he likes it better. I don't know why. If he thought if it was like more jerky. well, I think they ride. They do. I think they do ride better, and they got a little more. The the ride is different because of the center of balance. You know. Yeah. The visibility in them is way better. Um, it's just all in what you like. You know. You can't sit in there and with the angry bees and just shut the door and kick the air on though. Because the one, he had, I mean, it was enclosed. I'm assuming it probably had right. air everything. I wouldn't think, yeah, that's not the Hummer B. You're exposed, but like you said, you can see. Well, that's what I like about my machine. So my machine is is open air. I mean, I've got a cage over me, yeah. But like, I can see 360 degrees pretty much around me. That's um, the newer machines, you really can't see behind you, um, which kind of sucks, but. Um, the thing with the Bobcat is you, you can turn on a dime. Like you, like you literally, you pull three feet away from the truck and make a 90 degree turn and go the other way. Nice. And um, so everybody's got their own, what they like, what they don't yeah. like. Um, like. Grafting tools. Everybody's got their flavor. You, know? right. like you love yeah. the master grafter. I cannot yeah. graft. Yeah. <laughs> I, I get like 30% take with that thing. And I'm just like, whatever. <laughs> Give me the Chinese grafting tool yeah, again. Thing. Yeah. That's what so, I would tell people if I'm teaching queen rearing. I'm like, I've got my preference, but there's people that graft three times, four times as many queens as I do a year, and they love the Chinese tool. So I would just say buy what buy a few and try them and whatever right. works for you. You know, the master I knew a guy part of it's how I knew you a, hold it, you know. Like right. you gotta put it kind of in between these two fingers and then that you know that lever is right by your thumb then because i couldn't figure it out at first but i had an old one and i found a piece of paper in the box and it showed you how to hold it and then after i figured that out i'm like okay i could i could probably use this thing i know an old guy that uh he's no longer in the industry but um he used to always go down to texas and make all of his splits and stuff but he grafted his own queens and he would take a, a I don't know some kind of some kind of wood that was in Texas yeah. and he would whittle it, he would whittle it down and make yep. his own little grafting tool nice. and he did it every year yeah. and it was like yeah. he's like I've been doing this for 30 years you know it's like man you whittle your own little grafting tool out of a piece of wood you know yep. so to each his own everybody's got their own opinions everything yeah. you know trucks trailers I mean loaders I mean, whether you re- use ropes or straps or I mean, it's, it's every, everything, you know? Yeah. So, for but, sure. But no, I think the, the, the swingers are nice. Uh, I know a lot of the guy, the, the broker that I send my bees to, they're swinger guys. They use swingers for everything. So, um, yeah. They're a good machine. So, um, I think the newer ones they've had some corks because they went to uh, a joystick, so it's all electric. Oh, 
electric over hydraulic. Yeah. The old style, you had three levers, and they were, you know, hard Sunburn. hydraulic levers, you know, not not electronic levers. And so they've been having some trouble with their electronic stuff. But other than that, the motors and the drive drive chains and everything, they've been making those for years. So yeah. it actually, so the Hummer B, it used to be Swinger. And then Hummer B started making what used to be the Swinger. It used yeah. to be Swinger 110s and I want to say like 160s um articulating loaders yeah um, but so if you're moving around do you did you say you had a 14 or were you talking about your dad's old truck 14 foot flatbed do you just pull it on a trailer like if you're going to a yard you'll load up the truck and put the trailer or put the loader back on the truck and take off you yeah, know so the the truck the truck I have now is a, uh, it's only got a 12 foot bed and then I've got a, a trailer for my loader too. So you're, you're pulling a loader around. Yeah. Pretty much everywhere you go, unless you're working off the truck. So, how many um, which is on a 12 foot flat bed. How many colonies? Uh, I know exactly what I can put on my bed. Um, so if it's double deep, so I can put 48, if I only go too high, I can put 48. That's um, awesome. if I went three high, it's, you can do it. I've done it. It's kind of sketchy. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, well, it, it, it don't ride rough cause you're, <laughs> you're on the overloads. It's, it's pretty, it's, it's riding like a Cadillac, but, um, as far as, you know, smooth, but it's just, uh, I don't like having that, that high. I usually run when I'm running doubles, I'll run 48. And if singles, um, when I'm making splits, uh, cause I make single, single splits, um, we'll load, we'll put 72 on a truck, um, and then take them out and scatter them out in yards. So that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, eventually I'm going to upgrade my truck and I'll probably get a, a 14 or 16 foot bed so I can haul more. Um, but the old truck I got is, is a good truck and I like it. <laughs> so, yeah, but we're actually, we're, we're adding on to our, we're getting ready to start adding on to our building. So uh, we've kind of outgrown our building and I'm tired of working out of shipping containers and stuff. So yeah. we're getting ready to do some addition onto our building and then maybe eventually, maybe next year I can upgrade my truck or something. So mm-hmm. it's either that or I need to buy like a, a straight truck with like a 24 foot bed where I can haul, you know, a that'd, bunch. That'd be so, sweet. Yeah. Uh, I'm kind of at the point to where I can't really get much bigger and keep the day job too. I just, I don't know. I don't know where I'm going to go. I may just hover where I'm at and just see what happens. We shall see. Yeah. yeah I'm hoping we're going to try to get to a thousand this year and, if we do, um, kind of depends on how employee employment employee situation and mm-hmm. and all that works out. And I may I may just hover there because I think it won't be a lot of it won't be enjoyable. But I, you know, I can I can run a thousand by myself with some part time help. So yeah, uh, it'll be a lot of work. But yeah, you know, yep. this is all I do too. So it's not like you know, I got to work on the weekends and, and, you know, late in the evening because I worked all day at my other job. So, yeah. um, whenever I run into, right. I mean, I get up, well, the other morning I was up at four thirty in the morning, moving bees and didn't stop until, uh, like six o'clock going through hives. So, I mean, whatever I got to do, that's just what I do. So, yeah. I like the idea of having the freedom, though. Like, I know when I need to work, but I like to have the idea of once I'm caught up, you know, that I can go do whatever. Now I just grind all all the time. If I'm not at one job, I go to another job. But I'm 40 now. I mean, not that that's that old, but I can tell a difference, man. Like, I'm ready to kind of scale it back a little bit. I mean, I can run. I've got wood 
for 200 colonies. You know, I don't have that many with bees in it right now, but uh, yeah, that's plenty, plenty to keep up. Right. With. Well, and I, so I wasn't planning on going to a thousand this year, but uh, we had put, we put, we went and put in a, a wood shop because I was going to start making my own equipment and stuff and not to sell just for my own personal use. And, and, uh, and lo and behold, I got the opportunity to buy a bunch of equipment out from an operation in Nebraska. And, and now I've got all this, I've got this wood shop and I, I think I've cut like 10 pieces of plywood in it, you know, <laughs> I, think I bought all, I bought all this equipment, but it was an opportunity. And, um, yeah. And with that opportunity, you also come with opportunity of, of growing even more this year. So, because yeah. um, I've, I've, I've got all the equipment now. So, um, but, and the same token, like I literally have, like, my barn and my house is completely full of bee equipment. Yeah. You know, <laughs> every shipping container I have is full yeah. of bee equipment. Yeah. I've got bee equipment sitting outside under tarps. Yeah. And it's like, <laughs> I think it's time to add on to the building. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I, I'm, uh, I'm glad I built mine, which I mean, it was needed, you know, even if I didn't have a bunch of bees, I was to the point, you know, I had a tractor sitting out and, you know, it was time. And yep. My wife moved it from a want to a need and I didn't waste any time. <laughs> Which I'm glad I did because I built it just before materials went up too. So you know, yeah, that's the bad thing. Like here a couple of years ago, I looked at adding on to the building, and I just didn't have the money at the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I was growing the bu the business, you know, I knew that I was going to need more room. Really? Yeah. But I was like, I, I've got, you know, I I invested it in the bees and the equipment, you know. And now I'm like, you know, everything's super high, you know, yeah. it's probably going to cost me, you know, 50% more than what it would have three years ago. Yeah. But it's no longer, it's no longer, I want it. Like yeah. now I, need it. Yeah. like it's got to happen. Like yeah. there's no longer, hold, no long, no point in holding it off because mm -hmm. it's just going to get worse or oh, so. Yeah. Well, you'll use it. Like you said, it's not like you don't need it already. Yeah. So, yeah, but that's the nature of it though. You just constantly growing and mm -hmm. expanding and you think you got enough and you don't. So, yeah. But, no, I think it, depending on if I can, if, if I find somebody that, you know, wants to work all the time, I might go bigger. Um, mm -hmm. But if I get, if I'm just doing it myself and then have some temporary seasonal help, I'll probably just keep it around a thousand and yeah, and I can, I can manage that and yep. do just mine. So like you uh, said, if you have people to pull, help pull honey, or if you need help whenever you're making splits or something, you know, pay somebody right. part time. I think he, right. he, well, he mainly hires uh, kids from his ag, you know, ag department at the local high school. I think that's where he picks up some and because i asked him for advice because i'm kind of that point which my kids can do more now right but he's like i pretty much just tell him you know there's a trial period if you can't stand me or can't stand bees no hard feelings you know because he's like right. it's a small community you know and he's right. like if, I, if you're not working out and I got, you're not doing what i want you to or whatever he goes no hard feelings you know, we'll, we'll part ways. I'm like, that's probably the best way to do it. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I had, well, I, so I had the same thing. I bought, uh, I say I bought, uh, they have a FFA auctions where they auction off the kids, you know, so you go oh, in there, it's yeah. a fundraiser for FFA. Yeah. So it's like you go in there and you bid on an eight hour, uh, for those kids. Well, I bid on a couple of kids and, and this last winter got them. And of course, I didn't have any bee work for him to do, so I had him yeah. out there cutting firewood, you know. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> but one of them was really interested in the bees, and come to find out, he's actually allergic to them. But oh, really? you know, 
we think well, he thought he was allergic to them anyways. Yeah. Uh, when we loaded our bees to go to California, he wanted to come and help. So I paid him to come and help and and he ended up getting stung a couple of times, which I keep EpiPens on hand. But he's like, I don't think I'm allergic to him because I got stung a couple of times and I don't I'm fine. I was like, yeah, you're not oh, I'm glad. Like, right. you know. <laughs> so uh, I think some people think if they swell even that they're allergic to it. Right. But, I mean, the way I look at an allergy is if you can't breathe, you know, or have an anaphylaxis right. response. But I mean, I used to get fat hands. Like, you know, I'd be out there messing around with them, get stung a few times and my hand would puff up, you know, or, but it's right. like, I, I guess I got hit so many times my body just gave up reacting to it. It's still, yeah, hurts, I don't, but. yeah, it still hurts. I, <laughs> right. I, uh, I, I've already been stung more times than I can count this year. Yeah, and it's I like, so. I've know. had a few, but I haven't been in them a ton though, uh, but working on the, school stuff, which I'm, I'm that's getting that in my rear view. And I've just got basic classroom stuff, you know. I passed my comp exams and I turned in my project. So I think the worst of it's behind me. I can start cool. getting into these now. Well, it's probably good because I'd say you're going to have to start getting in them here pretty it's quick. about to get crazy. Yeah, I uh, think I'll be grafting in March. And I, like I said, I'm not even one of the early starters around here. You know, they are always think I'm a little behind, you know, because I think it's – soon as they got a few drones walking around they're grafting you know which is okay i mean i could probably get away with it because some of the queens i ship south anyway you know they'll be ahead of us right but i just kind of wait till that swarming instinct starts to kick in and it's way easier you know you yeah. have to coax them into it but yeah well, the thing is around here, I mean, for me, it's, it's different because my bees are coming back. So, so well stocked yeah, But before, before I sent them to almonds, I, I wouldn't start until April. Yeah. Um, yeah. There wasn't any point in it. So right, um, they're beefed up now though. That totally changes things. Oh yeah. Yeah. I already, I didn't see any, any queen cells with eggs in it, but there was already cups oh, yeah. in between. So, you know, they definitely, they know, you know, they definitely got a hint that, yeah. that that's what they're wanting to do eventually. So uh, it won't be long at all. But like you no. said, especially with pollen coming in, and you know, if it's maple, some of they're going to get some nectar out of it too. So they'll get rocking. Yeah, maple's just well. This week the buds are getting really, really big. So I mean, they're going to pop any any time. And I'd say with this rain, and then it's supposed to warm right back up. That might do it. Maple's going to pop. I mean, it, that'll do it. So. They're wearing them out down here. This last week, I was down walking by the creek. It was a sunny day out, and you could just hear, you know, the hum, and you look up, and but they're kind of hard to see them when they're that high up, but they were, right. they were working them hard. Well, see, right behind my, my warehouse uh, is a big red maple mm. um, that my sister planted when she was like really? six years old. Yeah, <laughs> that worked out pretty good. And then my dad loved locusts, so the whole property has got locust trees all over it, scattered, yeah. you know. So I can usually know when those two are blooming pretty good. So, oh, yeah. Uh, but it's <laughs> it's getting close on the maple. I don't see any green on the locust yet, but the maple is is definitely getting close. So yeah, I planted but, a bunch of black locusts here. And they've bloomed a couple times, but I think there's something else blooming whenever those open up because I see bumblebees on it, but I don't see honeybees on it. So they're they're on something at that time yeah. of year. But and who knows? I mean, it varies from year to year. You know, maybe they'll wear them out this year. I know I I was talking to Grant Gillard one time, and I'm like, man, I've, I've never seen my bees work goldenrod. Like, I don't think they work it, you know? And I swear it wasn't a week after I said that I was out by my colonies and I looked and they were on the goldenrod. Right. Yeah, see, my bees around here, they'll they'll work the goldenrod a little bit, but we have a, a big uh, uh, flow off of smartweed because we, oh, cool. we live in a valley. Uh, well, the lake... The reservoir that we live on has a bunch of, of flooded ground yeah. and a lot of lakes and stuff like that. And they plant smartweed for ducks and stuff. Oh, so yeah. 
um, and the stuff just grows wild too. Um, so we get a pretty, pretty strong smart weed flow usually. And, uh, that pretty much draws the bees attention. To oh, the, yeah. So there's a lot more, a lot more nectar comes off smart weed than does goldenrod, but the honey is almost the same. Like it's a dark, very strong, strong smelling honey. So, yeah. but they do, I know that they are working it cause I see them on it. And I know I, I see a lot of yellow pollen in the fall, so I know they work it around here, but um, the main nectar nectar source is smartweed. So there's something else going whenever that the past couple of years I've seen them on the goldenrod to some degree, but they're not just completely wearing it out. And it seems like we've got some asters that's bloom about the same time. They're on that too, you know. It's just yeah. kind, of a, kind of a smorgasbord for them then. Well, and they're in that frantic mode trying to uh, get ready for winter. Get ready for winter. So, yeah. Yeah, for sure. But, well, I've kept you on here about two hours. I yeah, it was a good time. It, I've enjoyed it. And I, <laughs> I've, I've, like I said, I've been kind of just talking to a few different people, sometimes people that are doing research. And I wanted to talk to somebody like you that. Um, you know, I'm a wuss. I won't quit my job and, and go full time with bees. But you're one of the guys that I, I've always been impressed with that you took the plunge and are doing it, man. So thanks for taking the time to talk with me. And I've enjoyed the heck out of it. And I'm sure we'll we'll catch up again. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we we'll we'll keep it in touch for sure. Yeah, I was I like watching your stuff, um, you know, and i been keeping up with your queen rearing and stuff and i mean i bought queens from you i think well i bought virgins off you a couple of times um yeah and I, I, remember, off those, I think you got some those. of those purdue ones too one time and some of those yeah. things were mean but kathy misco yeah. loves the ones that she got so i mean some of them were cool which i knew whenever i did that you know some of them would have the best of both traits but i didn't right. have time to keep digging through them man so I don't have those as much anymore, but you'll have to let me know how those do. Those are measurably, they should be extremely mite resistant. Even the daughters, after you open made them, they should still have a high level of it. But you have to. Yeah, that's, I mean, I'm looking forward to, to getting some daughters off of them. And I'll plan, I plan to try to keep track of where they're at and, you know, but. Don't sell uh, them all. Don't sell the best of them. Keep a few. For, <laughs> I think I'm not. I'm, I'm, I'm going to like, be. Man, I sold the, the best. Ones. No, no, I won't be selling uh, any selling any of them because um, I just don't know how they're going to perform. You know, yeah. and I don't you know, I might it might be a bad thing mixing the VSH and Minnesota hygienic. It could be a total disaster. I might have the meanest bees in Missouri before yeah. this is over, you know. So yeah. I might have yards that I have in my notebook wrote Corey's BI, whatever, you yeah. know. Yeah. It'll like, be like the formic acid, like we're not going there again. Yeah, no, yeah. It's like I think these, this cross cool. this this cross isn't going to work, you know, yeah. it's like the F1, the F1 hybrid cross did not work at all, you yeah. know? Well, that's the so. thing the, the Purdue is like, I don't think the mom was that bad. And I know the VSH, I made it them too, weren't that bad, but for some reason, like I got a percentage of them that were, I mean, they were productive, like big colonies. I was like, they're, they don't like mites. They don't like high beetles and they don't like big <laughs> But it was just a percentage of them. And I think I weeded those out, you know, and I right. did, I just totally ditched that line because I felt like it was degrading what I had. But I think that like the, the ones you got in the past couple years, well, I say couple years, the past couple times that we tested and made breeders off of them, which that's some of them that you got, I, I feel like they're doing really well. And I, I think they'll be pretty productive too, but, you know. You have to give me some feedback on it. Oh, I will. Be good or bad, whichever it is. <laughs> oh, I know. That's what I want to hear. I mean, heck, you can't improve. You know what I mean? If something goes yeah. south or, or goes wrong, if you just stick your head in the sand, you can't get better. That's right. That is true. You know, yep. no, I, 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 I think it'll go good, you know, um, just mix in a little bit of genetics and yeah, see how it goes. And, um, uh, 
but no, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, it has been two hours, hasn't it? Wow. Mm-hmm. It doesn't seem like I've been sitting here that long. Time flies when you're having fun talking about beer. Right. That's, yeah, my wife gives me a hard time all the time that, like, once I start talking about bees, you can just talk about bees forever. And it's like, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. pretty much. Exactly. Uh, my so, wife's like, you, you, there, she has one rule on the hot tub. And it's, I can't talk about, I can talk about anything but bees. I, I break it all the time. <laughs> I can't help it. I try, but yeah, you know, you know how it is. Well, for my wife, when I'm talking about bees, she's just like lost. Yeah. But whenever, so she's a nurse, mm-hmm. so she'll start talking about nursing stuff and You're she's using all these, all these letters and stuff. And I'm just like, I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. Like, I, I don't know what that means. And she, so then she'll tell me and I was like, okay, now I get what it means, but I didn't, but she, she tells me like, yeah, like I ought to know. And I'm like, yeah. no, I don't like, <laughs> it's kind of like whenever I tell you something about beekeeping and you look at me like a deer in the headlights because yeah, same, same you don't know, you know, same concept. Yeah. So yeah, but, Jamie's learned a lot through osmosis, but there's when I go off the deep end, she she can't hang. <laughs> yeah, hundred percent. So, but yeah, it was fun, man. Take it easy. I'll keep you uh, up to date on the Queens. So, um, please do. I hope we both have a good year this year. Me too. Me too. So, we'll catch. Take up it easy. Soon. See you, Paul. Right.